from last week we were able to make a service tag for our website uh, that we're going to be plugging to a client's site so that in the event that they lose our contacts they're able to find them in their own dashboard. Today we're actually going to take that a step further and add that content as though it was dynamic so that the client can always get maybe a new service person and they don't feel left out. So if you're ready, let's jump into the code. So today I'm going to show you how to make your content in your uh, widget dynamic. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little plugin for ourselves in another website. Uh, maybe this is our service center or our service website. We're going to create a, a, a REST API endpoint and I've done this through a widget that I've actually written and that will allow us to have dynamic content that changes on our server and this information will be picked by our service tag saved in a transient in a database and then the customer can be able to consume it in their website in the event that they lose our contacts but they will be able to find it in their website dashboard. So if you're ready let's jump in. So what we want to do today is we want to make this data actually um, quite dynamic uh, because telephone numbers change all the time, we have emails changing all the time and maybe we want to assign different uh, let's say tech, uh, different tech people from our tech team to support a different website. However we might not require to go into the client site and always change this plugin or maybe even send out updates to them. So having a REST API do that and send that data off actually would be a better option for you. So what I've done is I, I have actually written a, a small plugin and you can see in these few lines of code I've been able to leverage the WordPress REST API and I've added my own uh, namespace. I've actually added my own uh, contacts endpoint on there. So when you look at this in this uh, local website that I've created, I have a new namespace in the routes which is called lab version 1 because the LAB is my own initials and then uh, I've used the uh, version 1 so that I can maybe version this over time. So we have an endpoint right here and if we go to, to the different endpoints that we do have, we have one called contacts and right now it's just echoing out uh, the information that we set out which is return uh, and active. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just add the information that we wanted to have here. So I'm going to have an array which I'll call array. Uh, very uncreative of me but this will allow us to see what we need to do. So we're going to have the name of the tech. Uh, let's say I'll wrap this under brackets and then of course map and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Kelly Max, who is our our specialist. And then I'll wrap. Um, of course, what I want to do is uh, add the drop line. Let's say this is our contact content that we want to have. So just description would be the best thing to do. So we have a description here. And then uh, we'll just wrap this under this. And then the next thing that we need to do is have a telephone number, of course, which we're going to cut from here, put a comma, and then we'll add phone. And then last thing that I need to wrap is an email address from, from Kelly. Now of course we can do this, we don't have to manually add this content. Maybe we have millions of, uh, of uh, tech support that we want to add to this array. We could do a custom post type as you can also make your own. I'm sharing the video up in the little card that has just popped up. You can make your own custom post type and then you can actually um, route all those. You can do a WP query. Uh, I, I show you how to query a custom post type also in the video that's linked above. 
and then you can end up having this information dropped into an array like this one and then you just return this so we're going to save this let's go back to our endpoint and reload and we'll see that we actually have information coming out here if we wanted to let's say have more people uh, i'll just wrap this inside another array uh, this is the new way of uh, writing arrays in php uh, as we keep on growing so i'll just add a comma to this and then i'll duplicate this and take away this so maybe i'll just change this to gloria just to show you a little bit of difference so if i go back here and reload you'll actually see that we have two people kelly max and gloria max so for now uh what i'm going to do what uh, we have these two people so let's say we wanted to assign one to each website we could easily add um, a different uh key uh let's say we're going to assign this person to website let's say uh we'll call this uh maybe carlton.com now the beauty with having this added into our our endpoint is that we can always query this particular endpoint and then as we loop through the different contacts we'll just look for the website and then get the different names and then throw that in the particular um, widget that we've developed so right now what i'm going to do is just go back to the one person that we did have and i'm just going to clean this up a bit so the possibilities are many uh, so we'll just have this coming off now what I'm going to do is I'm going to request for this particular endpoint to bring in the information into our widgets uh, that we did have so we are right now we are good so we're going to go back to our endpoint here now I have a video that shows you how to query external APIs um, right also in the video that's linked here I'm not going to go into the details of how to do that but we're going to quickly use a very simple embedded WordPress function that is already in the core so when we use WordPress uh, WP remote request it uh, allows us to safely uh, query particular APIs and the first thing that it requires is actually uh, this URL which is our API URL that I'm just going to post here and then the next thing that it requires it that it requires an, an array of arguments are you posting are you getting information are you sending information into the head so for now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be passing uh, our method that we want to do so all these come in an array of uh, of data so what the first thing we do is that we want to add our method which is a, a get it's going to we're going to be getting information so we need to wrap this in uh, wrap this into those small quotes so it's a get method so we're going to be retrieving retrieving information and once we we get that back we're going to be able to use another WordPress method which wraps and uh, that information. So we use WP Remote Retrieve the Body. Now, of course, as you're thinking right now, we are retrieving only the body. However, um, we can also retrieve the headers if need be. So I'm just going to wrap this into a variable called a, re a response. So that when we query this uh, API endpoint in our get method, we shall the next thing we shall do is we are going to vdump our 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 response that we do get. So we're going to vdump the information that we get here. So I'll save this, and then I'm going to go into our dashboard and I'm going to reload this now you can see that we actually get back information we have the name kelly max we have a description uh, of course with our html that is escaped um, but we have all our information we have our phone number we have our email and we have the website coming in so 
that is a good start for us. Uh, at least we're getting back our information. So when we've had dumped that information, we actually see that we get back a, a string of information here and it's all wrapped up in JSON. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually just uh, JSON decode it. This information, I'm just going to wrap it under this functionality. WordPress coding standards require us to actually put spaces in between there. So what I'm going to do is I just do that and then I'll reload this. And you'll actually see that now we have all of this in some neat PHP. We have all our strings I escaped. We have uh, our bolden, our bold marks right here. And if I quickly uh, go to the code there, you will see that we have our strong uh, tags actually wrapped there. So we're not having that messy uh, JSON thrown into PHP, but right now what we have is a PHP object that we can loop through. So what we're going to do is uh, is we're going to actually just come here and say, uh, so we're going to loop through our object that we do have to get these individual pieces. So what I'm going to do is, uh, for example, I'm going to get this name here and I'm going to just dump this here. So First of all, instead of that dumping this, we're going to wrap this into our response and I'll call this response decoded uh, just to wrap that properly and I'm going to copy this particular um, variable that we've saved here and I'm going to wrap this under PHP and then I'll echo this, uh, put a semicolon and then wrap this in a, a closing tag for, for PHP. Now what I'll do here is just cut this and then I'm going to throw this into the Kelly just to see that we, uh, that we get her name. Uh, I see I have a little bit of error here. Let me see what did I do wrong. This is JSON decode open. Um, the response is wrapped in the remote body. I think I have an extra, um, have something extra in there. So I'll save this, come back, reload. I have an encode. So, so the error I'm making in outputting my code is that I am using this as a variable. My mind is locked into loops. But if we actually just come here and map uh, this information, I see an error. Okay, so I have mapped this to name, which is wrong. But if I save it and remove all the quotations and come back to my widget here and reload it, we're actually going to see that we have our Kelly marks here. Now in the event, should I decide to uh, let's say go back to my API here and change uh, this person's name and we are no longer having Kelly Max there but we are having Brian for example Brian Max um, who is the other partner in the business we our API has already changed here we have Brian and if our client actually logs in here they're going to have a new Brian Max who is showing up inside um, uh, as their contact person. I'll just go and make an edit here to have Brian in caps lock but we can also use our PHP to make sure that we always have the, the names capitalized um, the moment they're put in. So what we're going to do is we're going to just actually duplicate this, copy this uh, and throw this in proper HTML. Uh, so we'll wrap this into a paragraph tag do we need to do that? Um, I'll just use a span tag that we can always close off and we don't know how the paragraph is going to uh, represent us. So what I'll do is change that to the name and here we had a description and then the other thing that we're going to make dynamic is we're going to come here, change this, change this to phone And then we're going to, of course, change this also, this email into a dynamic one and we'll call this email. 
So what we do have here is we'll go back to our widget and reload this and we'll actually see this works out well. So at any time if we decide to change this information, if it we try to change anything that is on our REST API, we can make maybe we add, made an error in adding this. We are able to just um, make edits and then once we save this, uh, we'll always know that when we come to our REST API and reload, we'll see that there have been changes made to that and our client will of course be able to also have those changes represented inside um, their service tag. So maybe we change the picture, we can always have also a link to the picture of um, the particular person so that we have this as dynamic as possible. So I'll just drag this particular link. Let's say that's our URL for image and then I'll, I'll just do this and call this picture for now and then I'll, I'll save this in there. Of course at the end add a comma. So if we come back here and then just copy this same code because we are trying to reuse everything if I paste this, close off this PHP and change this to picture and save it. Uh, of course, when we reload this, this will work. <coughs> My internet is broken, but uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to just show you if we inspect this, you'll actually see that we are having this showing up and our code is no longer broken. Now, I've showed you how to make this content more dynamic for your particular, uh, let's say your widget. However, this is not the best way to do this. It would be good for us if we actually made sure that uh, the client is not always going to the server to check this because it's not every day we are changing this information. So what we can do is we can actually wrap all this information under what we call a, a transient and say maybe this information changes. The, the, the user should query our server for this information maybe every 24 hours or maybe every 12 hours just depending on how we do work. But that will reduce the number of network calls to our server to check for this new information that might not change in months or even in years. Um, so the best way to do that is actually to wrap this information in a transient and once we have all this information in a transient of course the user will be able to get it but it will be saved in the database in their website database and that will allow it to change or make that small call every maybe 12 hours or 6 or 48 or in a month. However, I think it would be a bit misguided if you leave it there for a week or a month. What if you change some stuff who has gone rogue today, you would want that information to be changed as quickly as possible. So maybe 24 hours would be a better guess. So uh, I'll just show you how to do this quickly, how to wrap that information into a transient. So in order to have a transient come for us, what we're going to do is we're going to actually register that transient. Uh, however, if we, we have to first check for it whether it is available. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by coding here and say if our transient is not empty, uh, this is me querying for the transient and I'll use the words, WordPress or the classic press get transient function and I'm going to query for a particular token uh, which we shall decide to call maybe lab, lab contacts details. So that is our transient. Uh, we're quickly querying to see if it's available. If it's not empty, then we should be able to get that particular information and throw it out. But if it is empty, then we are going to go and query for this information. So else, else we go and do this whole query 
I'm going to just move this information here. So we can query that and then we shall also just move this information up here and then what we are going to do is we are actually going to save this information in our new transient. So what and to do that we use the set transient function and the set transient actually requires just uh, three arguments. The first one is the token name which we cop which we set up there which we're getting up there. The next is what kind of data are you going to be saving? So we're going to be saving this particular information. So we'll save our variable in there. And the next thing that we are going to do is actually set for how long do we want to be? Which could be, let's say we want to save it for five minutes uh, in seconds. If we want to do that. But there are other ways of saving this for information as you could have days in second. So let's say we want to save it for one day. We can do that. We could even have hours in second. Let's say we wanted to have 12 hours. So you change this to 12 and then you'll set this for 12 hours in a second. So we'll just leave this in for a day. And what this is going to do is that it's going to run every 24 hours this our transient will expire and then will of course that means it will be empty and so we have to query for this information yet again. Now that we've managed to set this um, we're going to just choose this variable I'm just going to copy it here and I'll say if get transient is not empty then we are going to set our content as this. So I'll save this and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually open up our PHP my admin just to see what's going on there uh, when we do that. So I'll go to I'll go to my uh, database and if I go into the WP options which is where all our our transients would get stored if we show all and we quickly look for lab we'll see we only have label uh, and label there so we don't have a transient of sort however once I save this and then I just come I'll just clean this up a bit once we save this and then go to our dashboard and reload this information here we see that we have an undefined constant. It should be day. My, my I made an error. It should be day. So it's supposed to be day in seconds. Uh, I'll just save this and then I'll reload this. And we'll see that this works out well. However, if we reload this, we we'll reload our database here and look for lab again. We're going to see that we have four matches here. And if I quickly run here, you'll see that we have a transient called lab contacts detail, which stores all the information in here. This will expire every 24 hours. So let's see what information is stored there. We'll see that we have our name, Brian Max, description, a phone, and website, and all of that. So that is available for us to use. So we can quickly get that information. It's stored and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my REST API here and change this to Mica Max as a name. And if we go back to our REST API, of course automatically this will change. But if we reload our dashboard icon, we'll see we still have Brian Max. It's because our transient has not yet expired. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manually uh, try to delete this for my database to show you what would happen. Uh, so if we go here and look for contacts we'll see this is available so I'm going to just delete this. So I'm, if I reload this information here of course the transient will not be a, a, a will not be available but now we have Mica Max who is our new contact person and if we reload our options table here you'll actually see that our transient was yet called again and we have Mica Max coming in there. So 
Of course, after 12 hour period that we've set on our widget, this transient will expire and we'll have the new information. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, in the reality. So if you enjoyed this video and you really, really loved it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you've not yet subscribed so that you don't miss any new information that comes out. And if you have any ideas that you'd like us to work on, please leave that in the comments and then we'll see how we can be able to work that out and I could show you a good example. The other way of actually having this information non-static is to use something that is um, uh, best in an options page. But I realized that using an options page would have to be inside the client's website and you don't want to go into the client's website every other time to change that you actually that is illegal um you would be intruding on their privacy however with this you could be you could be able to let them know that i will be sending you the contact person and they'll be able to change and you explain to them the process and i'm sure they would say you know what that's okay go ahead allow that plugin to work in my website and then uh, they would be able to reach you in case of any trouble or in case they lost your contact details so Thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you do like it and check out the other stuff that I do have in this channel for you. Thank you for watching and happy coding.